Hello from Chinature.com, this is Mark Josie. Today I'll be doing this video on the Timman TCR review. So we just got this gun in today and as you can see it came in a pretty nice uh, typical box. Just the design and everything looked just like the Timman X7. So uh, basically the background is almost the same but they changed the gun in front and so on. So yeah the box is pretty nice. Um, but when I get the box in my, sorry, not not in my mail, but when I get the box today, I go like that, and there's some kind of rattle inside, and uh, so it turned out it was the bag of accessories that was rattling inside. So I would say the packaging is well, it's acceptable, but it's not really, um, you know, there's a little touch there that needs to be worked on. If they actually make it so that you don't feel the rattle, I think it makes it much uh, better. Okay, so, ditch it. So it came with a manual, which no one will read. And also, it came with a bag of shit here. So, here you can see we got some white grease shit. And then there's the squeegee shit and the <laughs> barrel cover shit and also the allen key and a little bit of spare o-rings. Yeah, one spare o-ring. I don't know why only one spare o-ring. Oh well. Yeah, so basically <laughs> that's it and um, the gun. It came with the magazine released and stored aside because it was too long to fit into the case but well easy right you just take it out and snap it back in the barrel is not installed inside the gun as well i think they did it on purpose to save some space inside the box because um this barrel is kind of long okay what's good is you can use your hand to fully grab onto the barrel with this uh, length here but um, basically the same kind of threading on the X5, uh, I'm sorry, A5, X7, and TIPX and so on. So it's the same kind of uh, barrel that you can use and also swap around. So let me just twist out the barrel and do a little bit of measuring to compare with the other barrels um, from the other guns, okay? So before we start doing analyzing of the gun, uh, here's the barrel. Okay. It's not ported, but there's a little muscle flash or whatever you call that. Okay, there. Length. Today we get a nice, woo, look at that. Even blind people can see it. So it's about 11 inch. Yeah, if you count the tip, 11 inch. Okay, so that's pretty long. Um, compared to... One of my favorite barrel. This is uh, the X7 uh, Super Pack barrel. Uh, it, it came with the Super Pack Super Pack, and this is actually a 14-inch barrel. So I really do like this one. I may put this on the gun instead. Okay, now let's take a look at the TIPX barrel. The TIPX stock barrel is about six and a quarter inch. Okay. So this is the TIPX barrel. Um, I tried to put the TIPX barrel inside the gun. It fit, but it slid in there all the way. So you can't really screw the barrel tight. Um, I think it could be done if you really wanted that barrel in there. You can take off this front portion, which is the shroud, like the front portion. A few screws I can see right now, one, two, I think two screws or something, and then you can screw this on. But then it's hard to take it off because you need to screw it off and then put the thing back in. But it looks more like an MP9 right now with that thing um, hiding inside, okay? So without the barrel sticking out, it does give you a bit of cool looking gun like that, okay? So basically... The gun looks more like an MP9 right now with the uh, big barrel right here. It looks pretty cool. Okay, with the barrel that it came with, okay, you can see obviously something is sticking out. So it, it takes away that kind of look, okay. So it's also a little bit longer, but it, it works, okay. So this one is pretty good. With this 14 inch barrel from the X7, 
snap it on and it looks kind of too long but uh, it's fine I think okay yeah so you can see basically that's how it looks it, it's pretty okay if you extend the stock okay like that it's pretty okay yeah okay so basically I personally think um, I may go with this 14 inch barrel at the end but of course for the a lot of uh, video that we're going to do about testing the gun out and so on we'll be using the stock barrel just to see how well it does and not to forget to mention that I put grease on the threading uh, the thread things because uh, when I try to screw it on it was kind of too um, too tight or it's scratchy uh, so the threading might be kind of not really done well or whatever I don't know but it's just not very smooth when I try to twist it in so after that uh, greased work it actually twisted much better okay now before we um, get on too much about the power and such let's take a look at the gun close up first okay so the gun looks like that basically you can see it's a black gun it looks pretty uh, nice and not very cheapo looking so I will have to say the first thing that um, I have in mind after picking it up I took this in indoor uh, from outside and it's, it's pretty cold today so when I picked up the gun the, the whole gun is very cold you know it's like this thing is not plastic it feels kind of metal and then somehow you know when you touch this tipman the, the word okay this is sort of like metal kind of I don't know if it's really metal or something but it feels rigid and it feels um, met metal vibe right here maybe it's metal I don't know okay so right now just by touching it it feels like metal and then you feel the whole thing feels like metal and I was like hey isn't this supposed to be a plastic shell gun um, so yeah the plastic is pretty good it's not like those uh, cheapo um, plastic that is like shiny and you can see the uh, seams and all that stuff this one it feels sturdy everything is nicely assembled um, beside the sight that is kind of crappy in my uh, opinion um, the other stuff they're really well built I would say really well built um, you, even right here if you look at the back of the grip it's very hard to spot that seam right here that splits in half so everything it looks really um, together and the whole gun does not wobble okay even the stock you can go like that it doesn't wobble it doesn't move left and right it doesn't uh, like there's no not much play to it the sound that you're hearing is more from the magazine okay but yeah this one you can't even pull it you see you can't even pull it off it's so stiff even I know that there's this, this latch here that you can eject the mag but it takes some effort to take the magazine out so you can see how tight everything is screwed together you see right now I'm trying to put this back on and it takes some effort to snap it back so it, it's really solid um, the whole gun is really solid okay that's the first thing I realized the second thing is the weight it's not super like featherweight kind of gun but it is light you can hold it with, with one hand move around like that and, and it doesn't feel like super heavy but it's okay like it doesn't feel like um, a gun that is too light and then you feel like it's a toy it's not like that this is pretty okay for a SMG kind of thing it's pretty okay the feeling of it like especially if you put the 12 gram and then the uh, balls in it, it will feel feel pretty good so right now um, let me go over the guns and the features okay so this is a fully plastic gun the internals of course just like the TIPX uh, there are a lot of uh, metals and brass tubes and stuff like that inside so we'll do a disassembly video in the future but right now you can see um, the whole thing is very plastic the stock right here looks very nice and finally I would say finally it's not an other AR-15 stock so um, I really like the style right here right here there's a button thingy that you press and you can pull it out so it is adjustable you have a few adjustment one two three four five five adjustment about okay so you can slide the stock um, forward and backward and then there's this screw here which is very hard to unscrew I used a tool to help me and then after that you can basically take 
this uh, cheek peak and raised cheek peak. Okay, so take some effort, but yeah, it does work. Okay, let me try to do it, and there we go. Okay, you see, I just raised the cheek peak piece. Okay, so this is adjustable as well, but it's not very smooth. The uh, up and down of the cheek piece is for people wearing masks and want to, you know, go up a little bit. So basically, I like this piece as low as possible just to keep it low profile and also be able to see the sight properly. Okay, so basically that's uh, how it looks and then you can put your hand over this as well, just like that. Okay, as for the sling attachment, right now I don't see any obvious uh, spot that you can attach a sling to actually. Right, there's no sling attachment. So I guess um, you can make a loop right here and then you can attach the sling like that, maybe, okay? Or maybe we need to put it on the rail. Anyway, so that's how it looks. And then, um, okay, so basically it's like this. And then when you get onto the body, this whole thing is one piece of uh, whatever, like one, one piece. So uh, you split the two halves just like a TIPX. So from here to here to here is one piece. And then here, this section is uh, what they call the shroud, which is the front section and you do need that that section on the gun to operate okay so um, here you see some holes right here the cutouts and they are not going to let you see inside the gun when you peek into the holes so it's not like oh things will drop into the gun from those holes no it will not okay I think that even um, water will not go in there so if you look through the holes you cannot see into the gun it's really uh, covered up the rails, they are plastic and very, very rigid. When you, like, they are scratchy. When you put your hand over it, it feels like shit. I mean, <laughs> like, it's very scratchy. Um, the rails, like, it hurts my hand to just go uh, over a side way or that way. Okay, the side rails, they are smoother and they don't scratch your hand. But the top rail is really awful. I don't know why. The lower rail is okay too, but the top rail is really really scratchy um maybe it's a good thing because it won't slip stuff off but uh not really my kind of thing so anyway the sights there the iron sight they're flip up and pre-installed but they are very crappy uh, what what i mean by crappy is because to to flip them up okay there's the two latches here whatever you call that okay you have to press them down you see how hard it is I tried to press it down hard, it's not coming up. It's very hard. Okay, you have to use two hands. Oh, there we go. This one is too stiff. The other one, you can basically use your one hand and flip it up. So maybe quality issues is the problem, but they are stiff, very stiff, okay? And if you look through it, um, I don't really see that these sites are really nice quality sight and also one of the flaps here or whatever you call it I cannot push it downward to make this hole fully exposed so right now when I look through it I am kind of forced to look at a smaller peep sight uh, hole and see the post here so it's kind of weird and also the finish on the post right here is kind of bad when I look at it, you can already spot some flaws right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a white spot here. That is from the um, bad cuttings or sanding or whatever you call that. I don't know, but it's just not high quality. So these iron sight, well, maybe if you say they're, they are uh, backup sight, okay, sure. But I'm sure that everyone who got this gun will want to put your own optics or your own pair of iron sights on and replace this kind of crap. So just like the Tipman X7, all those accessories are very much like toys grade. So it's really crappy. I do, however, like the foregrip right here. This is the foregrip. I do like this one. Um, why? Because it's sturdy, it's big, and uh, look, okay. You can fold it up. Okay, this is one bad thing, which is the stiffness. But then it happens to all the foregrip. So you can uh, put, it, put it back up here. And then if you like, you can press this button and slide it. Okay, so right now you see it looks really cool like that. And um, I think that I may 
just use this foregrip on my other gun, maybe. Because I really like the design, and but I don't think it fits this gun, uh, this gun so much. So, yeah, maybe I'll take it off and then use it other on another gun. But, yeah, right now it looks kind of weird <laughs> right here. Okay, but it, it may look cool on an, an other gun, like the Tiberius, maybe. This here, people say, okay, you have a little groove here for you to hold with your gloves and protect your finger. Well, that's kind of bullshit because, um, you know, after holding it myself, no one will hold the gun like that. <laughs> like, you won't hold it like that. Usually, you hold it like this, right, with the foregrip. Or you want to hold it like this, okay, with, with this pressing onto a button from the light or whatever right here but right now it cannot be done okay because it's too far outside so maybe we need to shift it here and now we can press the button on your tactical flashlight maybe okay but it's just i don't know it's not really right to me okay so basically i think um the foregrip is nice, it's very sturdy, there's no wobbling, no play, whatever, and it's extremely fast to take out as well, just like that. So I think that it's a good foregrip, but it's not really good for this gun, maybe. Um, well, I can't really expect that much from Tipman. Sometimes they make these kind of guns and, and it's kind of like the assess the, the gun itself is nice, but the accessories is crappy sometimes. Uh, the stock is very nice though. It's not rubber padded. I, I think that it would be nice if they actually did rubber pad it. Um, I have an idea here though, uh, which is if you really like the stock, it will be cool if you use some tape to tape around here and then spray some plasti dip right here and then it will become very plasti rubbery and it, it, it will be a nice uh, stock option so basically I think that's one of the mod I might try in the future um, the whole gun here yes you can see the okay, tipman and everything is very much like the TIPX uh, the, the safety right here very easy to press okay make release right here just like any pistol Okay, this is a 12 round mags, and then you have a 7 round mags right here. Um, basically the trigger is very much like the TIPX2, but this one is black instead of silver. And also not forget, the most important thing is right here on the left side only. You have just pull this open, and it's, it's kind of um, uh, locked in place with a little bit of spring tensioned metal on the side so this is where you put the co2 inside and then slap it back on and pull the trigger once and it will pierce the, the uh, co2 and you're good to go the most interesting sell point of this gun versus tipx is the co2 loading system because the tipx you have to load from the front right here where the cap is and that makes it impossible to quickly reload your co2 this one you can open Dump it and then insert one more and you're good to go. So this is the only uh, thing that is better in this design. Um, otherwise, I would say the Tipman TCR right now performs uh, like before I shoot it. I would say it, it's pretty cool looking. Oh, by the way, one thing to uh, mention is the remote air. In the old TIPX gun, you need to drill a hole into the case and then uh, put that adapter inside and stuff. Here they already pre-installed this for you. It's right here. Okay, you just need to use your nail to kind of help it out. And then there goes the quick froster fitting, quick disconnect. So you can basically hook up a line right here and then use HPA right away. And also right here inside this hole is where you have the access to your uh, velocity adjustment. So you can adjust your velocity. Everything, um, the velocity adjustment and everything is alike with the TIPX. Um, so if you're actually using this for paintball, you won't even need to learn something new to operate this gun. If you're using it for less than lethal and stuff like that, I would say this gun will surely give, give you more power uh, than the TIPX. Uh, why? Because the barrel is longer. <laughs> so the whole magic behind the uh, TIPX platform is when you use CO2, the longer barrel you, you use, you, the more power you get. With the um, 3.9 grams riot control rounds with a stock TIPX barrel like this one, you get around the 
um, 300 FPS range. And then when you upgrade the barrel to a 14 inch barrel, you get way up to the, the uh, 320 kind of FPS. And then when you upgrade a longer barrel, you get even more FPS out of it. So um, it's more powerful with the CO2 when the barrel is a little bit longer. So this one, it came with 11 uh, inch barrel. My guess is it will shoot around like stably at highest. It will shoot about 320-ish FPS, which is very nice. Um, hope it will perform that way. And we'll see you in another video shooting the gun. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and like. Bye-bye!